Recently, I started getting saddle stapled booklets made for my monthly mail patrons. These are printed and bound by a professional print shop, and the quality has been great so far, but sometimes, as with any print job, it's very common to have some defects. Like this one, which I got printed in January, it got bound uh, with the outside cover on the inside. In a case like this or some other situation where I need a few extra notebooks on hand, I'd like to know that I can make my own. And that's why I bought a booklet stapler to test out. This one is made by Bostitch. It seemed like good quality and had good reviews. And first thing I notice is it's a pretty solid piece of metal, so it should be durable in the long run. Also, I appreciate the rubber feet on the bottom so it doesn't slide around as I work. It's mainly for letter size sheets, but if the paper is larger, it has a curled inside to accommodate some of that. Though if you mainly work with larger sheets, I think a long arm stapler would be a better option. Some reviews I read suggested using heavy duty staples, but I found the standard 6mm staples work just fine for my needs. I found the loading process very simple, it's just like an average stapler. And it's worth noting, this is made for pre-folded sheets. So you have to fold all the sheets before you staple. If you wanted to keep everything flat, a long arm stapler would be a better option. The notebooks I got from the print shop have a square back, which means two scored lines on the spine to make it flat. This method helps the cover lay more flat when the book is closed. I've seen expensive machines that do this quickly for large quantities, and I'm sure that's what the print shop used. I've also seen professionally printed notebooks that don't have a square back or any scored lines, and they work just fine too, so I want to test both styles. First, folding cardstock and eight sheets of standard weight paper in half and pressing down the folded edge. I lined the booklet with the stapler edge, pressed it down to staple, and did the same on the other end. The staple spacing doesn't have to be perfect, and I think this alignment is fine for this size of booklet. Next, using the same paper, scoring lines about 4 millimeters apart in the middle of the cover, and this measurement can change depending on the pages. Folding these together was a bit awkward, so it might help to fold the cover and pages separately for a square back. It fits on the saddle part the same way, and I stapled it the same way. I think either style can work for this type of paper, but for thicker pages, I would choose the square back. In general, a saddle stitch or saddle staple binding isn't made for a lot of pages, so I usually stick to between 8 to 12 sheets to then fold in half. I decided to test the semi-gloss prints from my paper shop, which I think could make durable booklet covers. I got the letter size, which I then cut in half to make smaller booklets. I tried a square back method on this one, but I noticed scoring on the glossy side of the paper made the print crack a bit. To get technical, this is what happens to digital prints when the varnish and ink are removed from scoring and the white paper shows through. So I tested the other way of folding in half and pressing the spine, no scoring, and to get technical again, might as well since we're here, here's some comparison. I found this cover paper worked better with no scored lines, and more paper made the spine more round and less likely to crack the glossy varnish. Cracking is also more noticeable on darker prints, so a little tip if you ever have to use digital paper to crease or score, try lighter colors or prints to make it less noticeable. I do like this paper for the glossy varnish on the outside, but because it's so rigid, I think it would work better for coil or spiral bound notebooks. I also tested a dark print in the felt paper type, which is similar to cardstock, and I didn't see any cracking on the spine. The rough texture on the paper might have something to do with it, it does have a bit more tooth, so ultimately I think results can vary with different paper and printing. To make the process easier for stapling smaller booklets, I thought it would help to put a piece of tape or a mark where to align the edges. Also I found keeping the booklet in place and sliding it over while I staple makes the staples more aligned, 
rather than rotating the whole thing to the other side. And I like that the stapler makes the ends of the staples curl in on the inside of the book, which makes the binding more secure. Also found that I can't hesitate when I go to staple or else the staple gets all crumpled or it doesn't go through all the way. One quick push on the stapler works best. To finish up a booklet, I trimmed the uneven edges and put it under some weight for a while so the book will lay more flat when it's closed. If you've tried this tool or anything similar, I would love to read your tips or experience in the comments below. I'll continue to use this in more book projects, and if I have any updates to share, I will include those in the description. A big thanks to my patrons and members for supporting this channel. If you would like to join, you can check out those links below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!